Hello there, my fellow goat people, and welcome back to some Warhammer Fantasy lore. After doing that video on the lesser known Beastman characters, I was inspired enough to make another Beastman video. This time on a character that is as infamous as he is well known. Ladies and gentlemen, this is none other than Kazrak One Eye, another Beastman character playable in Total War Warhammer. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Kazrak Wanai is one of the most legendary beast lords in recent history, a being of horrific reputation possessing a ruthless cunning far above that of his bestial kind. By the normal intellectual standards of beastmen, Kazrak has a unique and adept ability to control and harness the unruly spirit of the herd and devise simple but effective battle plans in order to win his engagements. He is very unlike the majority of his kind, having a patient and cunning mind at odds with the normal headstrong nature of his foul race. Kazrak is an eternal threat upon the human lands of the Drakwald forest, his warbands roaming the area, terrorizing townships and roads. No one is spared of these attacks his superbly trained warhounds chasing down the few who managed to escape the warherd before tearing them to bloody shreds of bone and flesh. He has plagued the cursed region for years, descending without warning and then slipping into the shadows once again. Never before has a beastman character proven so elusive to retribution that not even the Elector Count of Middleland could capture and subdue this rampaging monster. It is said that as long as Kazrak is alive, the Drakvald will forever be plagued by strife and conflict. Not that it's not plagued by strife and conflict anyway. After many ruthless raids against isolated groups of villages in the outskirts of the Drakvald, the armies of Middleland and Middenheim had no choice but to finally put the monster down once and for all. On multiple occasions, the Elector Count, Boris Todbringer of Middenheim, led the hunt to catch Kazrak and once even managed to trap the beastman close to the village of Elsterveld, against impossible odds. Kazrak lost his eye to the Count's runefang in the ensuing battle, but still managed to escape the slaughter with a few of his herds still intact. It is said that the eye of Kazrak never healed, and to this day it continually weeps blood and pus. Such a handicap would usually be fatal in the brutal culture of the beastman, but the wound of Kazrak actually made him all the more fearsome. For many months afterwards he plotted and schemed in a hidden lair, and only when the perfect opportunity presented itself did he put that plan into action. With a set of daring ambushes, Kazrak lured Dodbringer and his army into a cunning trap. He confronted the Elector Count and threw him off the horse, pinning him to the ground. And then, with slow deliberation, Kazrak gouged out the Count's eye with the tip of his horn. He allowed his enemy to live afterwards, some believing that he actually enjoys matching his wits against Oddbringer, seeing it as a worthy challenge to his own skills. Humiliated beyond imagination in the eyes of his fellow Counts and Council members, the Elector has posted a bounty of 10,000 crowns for Kazrak's head an act which ensured the coming and going of many mercenary bands in the region. But those two bands who have returned from the Drakvald have done so empty-handed, and often horribly mauled. These two rivals have clashed on multiple occasions since. Kazrak does remain a dire threat to the north of the Empire. His invasions are covering a wider area with each passing year, as more towns, forts and even castles fall victim to his well-planned and devastating attacks. But before we go, let us delve a bit more deeply into the story that actually put Kazrak on the map, the officially recorded Slaughter at Grimmenhagen. The deed which saw Kazrak rise to power is known to the men of the region as the Battle of Grimmenhagen, but to others it is known far better as the Slaughter at Grimmenhagen. The armies of Middenheim had been persecuting the warherds of the northern Drakwald for seasons, and a number of chieftains had attempted to unite all the Brayherds in order to attack back. Yet Middenheim dwells aloft the Ulrichsberg Plateau, one of the most defensible cities in the entirety of the Old World. Thousands of beastmen lost their lives in futile attacks against it. 
Kazrak, however, bided his time. Seeing that these men would be defeated not via brute force, but through animalistic cunning. And so he would launch a set of attacks against the less fortified towns of the Drakwald, burning them all to the ground, slaughtering hundreds of the Emperor's subjects, and turning many more into refugees. The herds of Khazrak committed such atrocities that the Empire had no choice but to seek retribution. It would only be a matter of weeks before Khazrak's plan came into fruition thus. He gathered a brave herd of 10,000 beastmen and attacked the fortress of Sternhauser Keep. However, after that, he ordered his army to withdraw, as soon as he received word from his scouts that an army of men was coming to relieve the Keep's defenders. Khazrak then split his horde into two. He led the first half to the north through the dark forest to a place close to the road where the army of humanity would be hemmed in by rocky, overgrown crags. The second half of the army was sent to a place several leagues north, where the roads crossed the ford over a wide forest river. Even as his army mustered on the reverse of the hill overlooking the road, Khazrak saw the mighty human army of Middenheim approaching in a column, led by a phalanx of mighty armored knights. Khazrak felt instantly the desire to order his gores to charge with animalistic wrath. But the Beast Lord cast his eye back at his army, exerting his control over the herds with a low animal growl. A hundred knights passed below, and then regiment after regiment of foot soldiers followed. Still, Khazrak enforced his will and the army waited, straining at a leash but obedient. And then, as the last regiment passed on by the road below, Khazrak heard a great brain cry from the other end of the road. He knew that the vanguard of the army of mankind had reached the other half of the horde. The Gores had finally succumbed to their bestial nature, just as Khazrak knew they would. Bellowing his own war cry, the Beast Lord leapt down from the rocks onto the road below, landing just a few yards behind the column's rearguard regiments. An instant later, his beast army landed behind him with a thunderous noise of several thousand pairs of hooves slamming into the ground. Within just a few moments, the beastmen were charging the startled men, cutting into the disorganized regiment with savage abandon. The battle that followed saw the Grand Army of Middenheim utterly defeated. The hundred yards or so of open land cut back on either side of the road and it became a blood-soaked killing ground. The knights had barely enough time or even room to bring one charge to bear. Darting Angors cut their horses down from under them before mighty two-handed axes of Bestigors hacked into the flailing knights. The horde of Khazrak drove through the human rearguard, cutting men down with frenzied barbarity. So complete was this slaughter that the two hordes of beastmen came face to face, and so hot was their blood that they fell upon each other. It is said that only Khazrak's animal dominance and the threat of his vicious whip, Scourge, stayed the hands of the beastmen and averted kinslaying too much. And from then on, Khazrak became a figure of awe for the beastmen and a figure of dread for all humanity. It's probably worth mentioning that Khazrak also has two unique pieces of war gear, known as Scourge and the Dark Mail. Scourge is the thorny whip of Khazrak. It is a lethal weapon about three meters long, whose cruel spikes can tear large shreds of flesh and bone and cause terrible agony in its victims. It is a lethal whip-type weapon that has been built with the highest and most bitter curses of generations and generations of Bray Shaman. The Dark Mail is an ancient chainmail suit created in the past by an unknown blacksmith. However, he must have had some connection to the Dark Powers as the armor has the ability to nullify and trap evil spells and colorful enchantments. Then it renders them useless against their iron rings, conferring the power of said magic to the bearer. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the infamous Beastman champion Khazrak One-Eye for today. Not the richest of lore behind them, but still an impactful story in my opinion. It's also the source of endless memes regarding Boris Todbringer, apparently. We can also have him as a leader in Total War Warhammer 1, as I said in the beginning. Or, if you own more than one Total War game in Mortal Empires.
With Kazrak done, I might also give Morgur a video, since he is, to my knowledge, the most Lorich Beastman character. Anyway, all that said, what about you? As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts on Kazrak One Eye in the comments below. If you found the episode informative, please leave a like, share, and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot for watching, and Sigmar's blessings be upon you.